say goodbye to Akron, Jerusalem, and say hello to Venice and Florence. Assassin's Creed 2 is here, and it makes a huge number of improvements over the original. If you loved the first game, everything you adored is still here. The cool rooftop running and climbing, the bloody assassinations, and an authentic and atmospheric open world. If you had reservations about the original, the sequel regresses almost every flaw of the first. There's a lot of stuff to do here, like exploring tombs, beating up two-timing lovers, and catching pickpockets in the act. Bigger cities, better visuals, and a better leading man, Assassin's Creed 2 is an excellent sequel in every way. A few additions feel a little contrived, but no matter. This is a long, satisfying, and beautiful adventure that never stops being engaging. Oh, and one other thing. Remember that disappointing ending in the original Assassin's Creed? Love it or hate it, you won't soon forget Assassin's Creed 2's shocking ending revelation. What's new? Well, for starters, the star of the game. It's 15th and 16th century Italy, and you play the majority of the game as Ezio, the son of an Italian banker. Ezio is a charming troublemaker, but soon he leaves behind his civilian clothes and dons the robes of an assassin. Ezio is a great lead, and it's fun to watch him grow from a young firebrand to that dangerous assassin. The storytelling is much more coherent and straightforward now. So while things are a bit more linear than in the original Assassin's Creed, the upside is that you get a much more interesting narrative filled with much more interesting people. That doesn't mean you've left Desmond behind, you know, the bartender whose memories you explored in the first game. However, how he fits into the new story is best left to discover on your own. Don't assume you don't get the free-roaming joy you'd expect from an Assassin's Creed sequel, though. You'll sprint across rooftops assassinating guards and climbing towers to synchronize your map and get a bird's-eye view of the absolutely stunning cityscapes. But there's a whole bunch of additions that keep things incredibly engaging. There's now an economy, for example, and you earn Florence for completing missions, looting corpses, and finding treasure chests. You'll also earn income from your Uncle Mario's villa, and you can purchase upgrades for it to bring in even more cash. With those florins, you can buy new weapons, better pieces of armor, and a lot more. You can even dye your robes if you want to look extra spiffy. As for the combat itself, it works much the same as before, but there are some subtle additions that make it more fun. If you have a bunch of different weapons to test in combat, you can even disarm enemies and steal their weapons. Or just pick the blades up off the ground after you've killed your foes. But the best new addition is surely the dual hidden blades. Almost every other element is enhanced in some way. Gone are the clusters of scholars that automatically walk you into a building. Now, the stealth elements are more organic. You can step into a group of citizens to hide, though there aren't many missions where this is an absolute necessity. You can hire groups of, uh, courtesans to distract guards. Or hire thieves to fight guards with you. It's also easier to tell whether you're apt to get noticed by patrolling enemies. There's a notoriety meter that tells you how likely you are to be recognized, and it acts sort of like the wanted levels in Grand Theft Auto games. To decrease your notoriety, you can assassinate key guards or pay off town criers. The easiest thing to do is to tear down the wanted posters that appear. But the posters usually appear in places no one, not even guards, would ever see. And like a few other additions in Assassin's Creed 2, the wanted poster thing just seems a little contrived. Another aspect that doesn't quite work to the game's benefit are the puzzles that you can discover and solve, though I'd be giving too much away if I told you the specifics. But almost every other addition is truly wonderful. You'll race in a covered wagon and fly above the rooftops in a bizarre flying contraption thanks to the help of your friend, Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo will also upgrade your synchronization bar, that is, your health bar, when you bring him codex pages which are hidden in buildings around the cities. Another great addition, the tombs you'll discover. 
Inside each of them is an important artifact you need to retrieve, and you'll reach it with some traditional platforming levels that might remind you a bit of Prince of Persia the Sands of Time. Assassin's Creed 2's platforming is as smooth and slick as you'd expect, and it's fun to figure out how to get from point A to point B in those tombs. A few of the puzzles are timed, as are some of the main missions, but it's fun and easy to string together jumps. The tombs provide some of the best moments of the game, and there's a treat in store for you if you find all of the artifacts. Let it be said, Assassin's Creed 2 is probably the best looking open world game ever created. The sumptuous lighting, the sense of place, the crowds of people going about their business, the way the city seems so organic, the whole presentation is absolutely gorgeous. As fans of the original would guess, the animations are probably the best you've ever seen in a game. Ezio is even more agile than Altair. His footwork is graceful, and every move transitions exquisitely into the next. There are a few quirks here and there, like some texture fade-in, but this is such a world of incredible beauty, you'll easily dismiss the little jitters. And the game sounds as good as it looks. The soundtrack is beautiful and appropriate for the setting, and all of the sound effects and little audio touches make a real impact. Even better, the voice cast is top-notch, including that of Ezio himself. No. It's too soon. I'm not ready. We rarely are. Que la morte non sia crudele. There's a lot of other stuff in here too, but the most important thing to know is that Assassin's Creed 2 addresses almost every flaw of the original. Not every edition is a great one, but for the most part, this is a sequel that gives fans exactly what they want while doing all the stuff the original should have but didn't. There's a lot to do and a lot to see. Go for a swim. Enjoy the day-night cycle. Chase down thieves to pick your pockets. No matter what you do in Assassin's Creed 2, you're going to have a lot of fun doing it. This is a game where you sense the care and love that was poured into making it, and it shows in almost every detail.